Thank you, Sophia. Oops, am I? All right, here I am. Thanks, that's a great story. All right, uh, now we'll hear from Jonathan Garcia, who, where did you go to school, Jonathan? I went to Citrus uh, Community College. Oh, and... Citrus Community College, yes. okay. All right, take it away, Jonathan. All right, I recognize that pickup truck. It's gonna be the end of me one day. Um, all right, so the name is Jonathan Franco Garcia. I was born in San Diego. Uh, I was raised in LA. Um, originally, I was born in San Diego and I think I, I was in San Diego for maybe, I don't know, a couple of months. Uh, my family moved down to Mexico. So I pretty much did, uh, did my elementary school there. So it wasn't until uh, middle school that, you know, we migrated back to the United States and I had to learn the language and I had to, um, you know, adjust to life uh, in the United States. Um, I guess you can say that going to school in Mexico, I uh, wasn't really good at anything <laughs> necessarily, but I knew I liked science in general. I, I know biology was fascinating for me. I knew one day I wanted to be part of uh, the science field in one way or another. I also found out that I really like animals. I grew up in a farm and um, ironically, uh, my dad used to work at a slaughterhouse. So I, you know, I will see the animals make their final trip uh, to the slaughterhouse. So obviously I didn't like that, um, but I didn't know any better. So I said, okay, well, I guess we have to eat. Uh, some of my hobbies uh, and interests include camping, hiking, uh, I really enjoy film photography. There's something about uh, mechanical cameras that is just, I find fascinating. Uh, my pickup truck is where I spend a lot of my time trying to fix. It's been in the works forever, but I have hope that one day it will run again. Um, and then I do kickboxing to release some stress from my everyday life of work and more work. <laughs> so you can kind of see I'm not afraid of getting down and dirty to get the perfect shot. Uh, I can't say that I have gotten it yet, but just like my pickup truck, I think one day I'll get the perfect shot. Uh, next slide, please. So my education. So going back to my high school days, uh, trying to learn the language and trying to uh, you know, adjust to living in a foreign country, even though I was born in San Diego, but I, I didn't consider it a, 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 my home. Um, it was almost impossible for me to go and train to a four-year degree um, because you know you're learning the language. You're you know if you think uh, taking biology, chemistry, in English when you don't, you hardly understand what the professor said, the teacher is saying, let alone all this terminology. It was almost impossible. So I knew I needed to go to a four-year uh, a two-year uh, college. So a community college was the local one I had uh, growing up. Um, I never really, my GPA wasn't even that impressive. I think it was a 2.5 if I remember correctly. So it's way, you know, way, way below uh, what any university, four-year university will take. So, uh, and for that reason, I didn't really like school too much. Uh, I still did okay in science because that was my interest. So it wasn't until community college that I became more proficient in English and I started to pick up good habits of you know, being a good student uh, that I, my GPA went up. I transferred to San Luis Obispo, uh, Cal Poly. Um, I specialized in uh, animal science. At that time, I wanted, wanted to go to veterinary school. Mm, you know, by the time I got to San Luis Obispo, I was more on par with being able to communicate. You know, I was more on par with, oh, okay, science is it's the field that I belong in to. Uh, you guys can see in the picture, that was from my uh, swine uh, class. So those two little fellas were uh, castrated later on in the day. Uh, in case you guys, just for clarification, I'm the one in the middle. Um, so I really enjoyed, I learned while going to San Luis Obispo, I, 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 uh, I learned how much I liked what I did. I learned, so, I learned that 
school is actually not bad. <laughs> I actually enjoy school now that I actually understood what was happening. Um, once I was in the same playing field as everybody else who can communicate, I, I felt like, oh my gosh, I belong here. And um, once I graduated, I worked at several animal hospitals, but little by little, I started to feel like, you know, I'm part of something, but at the same time, I feel like I'm not part of something. I feel like I'm making a difference for the animals and, and people that bring their, their animals for help, for care, but I feel like I can give more. I feel like I, I need to make a bigger difference for uh, to society. Uh, I just didn't know in what way. So I said, you know, I'm gonna, I'm not even gonna apply to veterinary school, even though my grades were decent. And, you know, I had extracurricular activities, uh, like all the requirements were pretty much there, it was just a matter of applying, I guess, and crossing my fingers uh, so that I got accepted. So, but I was just not happy. So I said, you know, let me take some time off and kind of figure out what I really want to do with my life. You know, after talking to the veterinarians that I work for, uh, the, the several ones, they didn't seem to be, uh, their experiences didn't seem to like grasp my attention as much as I thought. Uh, so I said, you know, well, while I figure out what I need to do with my life, I need to uh, better myself one way or another. So I've always been very shy uh, growing up. Uh, at first it was, well, the, la the language barrier was uh, you know, naturally, I, I was shy, embarrassed to uh, show my accent. Um, so I said, you know, what better to get better at being in front of people and speaking than actually singing to them? So I went to a community college, a local one, and I said, you know, let me give this singing a try. Uh, I was terrified, but somehow I pulled through. And uh, photography just came along for the ride because I just like photography. Uh, eventually, we moved from Northern California to Southern California. And I said, you know, this singing thing, who knows? I, I might be the next Pavarotti. Uh, so I said, Let, let's continue to singing. Somehow I managed to, to become an intermediate singer. And I said, well, while we're, at, we're here already, let's do choir, why, what the heck, why not? Um, so all of that was more like extracurricular, extracurricular stuff. At that point, I actually started working at USC as a research uh, animal technician. Um, I knew at that point that I didn't wanna go into veterinary school medicine anymore. I knew I wanted to do research. Uh, while I was going into San Luis Obispo, uh, two of my favorite courses, although very complicated, but I, I enjoy so much, it was embryology and genetics. So I said, well, if this animal thing is not gonna work out for me, I think there's uh, potential in genetics and, and uh, embryology. I just don't know how I'm gonna get there, but I know I need to get there somehow. Right, uh, so I worked at, um, at USC for a few years, and then I switched to uh, City of Hope, which is where I work now. And I was very blessed to find uh, a mentor that recommended by manufacturing. That he said, "You know, um, you have potential. You have you ever considered bio manufacturing or the biotechnology?" Uh, and I said, "Oh." Well, I heard of that. I have no idea what that is. You know, do you mind letting me know more? And he said, you know, I actually know somebody who might be able to help you. My wife works at Citrus uh, Community College. How would you like to take the uh, introductory, introduct, introductory course to biomanufacturing? And I said, oh, sure, why not? You know, I have nothing better to do. I already have long days of work. Uh, I, I'm not singing anymore, so I guess I can go and give it a try. So sure enough, I go and uh, it's just, you know, my world, my mind just expanded. I said, wait a minute, how come I didn't hear about this while I was going to my four year, uh, you know, university? I feel like we didn't know much about that. So I, I started talking to the professor and said, uh, Dr. Stark, uh, why is there, you know, why is my manufacturing and why technology so obscure, at least, you know, in Southern California. I know Northern California, it's, it's, it's more common. I think San Diego is also, you know, it's a growing industry, but LA area, I really didn't know much about it. 
Uh, and she said, yeah, you know, we're working on it. All these community college programs are actually, it's becoming more and more common. So um, if you can spread the word, that would be great. And I said, oh, of course, you know, if I can benefit from this, why, why not tell somebody else? Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so to backtrack a little bit where, because I had sensitive pictures go all over the place. Uh, so my career started as a veterinary technician at Parktown Veterinary Clinic. Uh, from This was my first job after Cal Poly. And that's when I made that realization that I said, you know, uh, I love animals. I love working with them, even though half of the time they want to bite me or scratch me. But uh, I feel like I, I, I can give more. I, I, need, I need more intellectually. I need a lot more. Uh, so I said, okay, so we moved to Southern California. Uh, I was looking for a job and the animal technician at uh, USC came up out and I said, oh, of course, you know, animals, research, why not? Let's do this. Uh, so I was working there. So I actually learned a lot about animal care in the research facility. I knew about animal care in the uh, animal hospital setting, but not in research, which is a lot, lot different, um, especially trying to restrain a mouse. Um, and then I also learned how to work in a research facility and how to manage the day-to-day -day, uh, tasks uh, from ordering supplies to uh, being uh, meeting local, state, and federal guidelines. Uh, so that was a wake-up call for me. I said, okay, this is where I, I think I'm getting there. I think I'm getting where I belong. Uh, I was there for two years, then I switched to uh, City of Hope, and I was, I've been here ever since. Uh, so I came in as a research support specialist. So all of my skills and my knowledge with animals, uh, you know, they said, oh, okay, well, since you know animals, we do all these experiments here. Uh, we need to have very specific genetically modified animals to uh, start our research. So I said, oh, okay, I know how to breed animals. So yeah, I can take care of your colonies. And uh, sure enough, I did that for two years. I was, uh, you know, they will tell me what their goals were. Uh, since I knew a little bit about genetics, a little bit about embryology, a uh, decent amount of animal uh, behavior and animal uh, experience, handling and, and, and animal health in general, it actually made it really, really simple for me. And it also gave me that opportunity to get even closer to the bio uh, technology field, right? Um, and then there was an opportunity as a research associate uh, at City of Hope. So my mentor, the one that introduced me to uh, his wife to take the course over at Citrus College, he said, okay, well, if you complete that uh, uh, associates in uh, science, at Citrus College, uh, you know, and there's an opening, I, I think we can work something out. Sure enough, I go get my, uh, my uh, AS degree from Citrus College, and then he says, okay, well, let's get to it. Uh, so I got the position with him. Uh, now at City of Hope, I provide help with the, our neurobiotic uh, core. So essentially what that is, in case uh, uh, you guys are not familiar with neurobiotics, it's uh, essentially we work with mice that have absolutely no organisms in them, like on them or in them. They are as sterile as it gets. Uh, and so my job in that core is to make sure that these animals uh, breed and we have enough animals to start research on uh, studies that wanna study one specific microorganism and see how that affects whatever study is at hand for, uh, for them. So one of the studies that is happening right now is these animals are given uh, a gavage of specific uh, bacteria, and then they also put them in high fat diets. So they're trying to study the metabolism of fat based on whatever uh, microorganism they give them. Um, so all of this is in like sterile conditions so that there's no contamination. So my job is to make sure that those animals are always kept sterile. Uh, it also in involves um, being aware of what the researchers are doing and see where they're going to so that if I see some red flags, I can 
uh, bring it to their attention and say, hey, do you think uh, doing this or doing that will have any effect on your research? And if so, this is are some suggestions that I have for you uh, that maybe can avoid, you know, whatever the thing, uh, whatever is, is happening at that moment. I wish I could give you guys more details, but I can because it's, all of this is uh, confidential stuff. But uh, let's just say that I, you know, I I'm able to recognize a lot of the things that the research are doing, uh, and then I'm also part of the transgenic core. So that one is we genetically manipulate uh, embryos, and so we have to become very very familiar with the whole uh, embryo genesis or the embryo cycle from where you know. Um, yeah, male and a female mouse, you know, they, they, they do their thing and then embryo development. So we collect embryos at different stages of their development. And based on when we collect and what we're doing, then uh, we manipulate them a certain way. So this is more specific to what I learned in uh, Citrus College. So documentation is a huge, huge part of this. Media making is a huge part of that. Uh, you know, it's saying the technical aspect of what I learned in Citrus College, I'm putting it into practice now. So I have the theoretical aspect working in the neurobiotic core, and I put my, uh, I get my hands dirty in quotations uh, in the transgenic core. Um, so, yeah, so I'm very happy at City Hall at the moment, and I do see myself. Uh, pursuing a uh, master's uh, degree at some point. Uh, I feel like I need to be more comfortable in my current role. And once I do that, uh, probably genetics will be what makes sense or biotechnology, who knows? Um, I guess in a year or two years, I'll, I'll figure out which direction I wanna go. But I guess the, the message I wanna leave you guys with is regardless of you know, handicapped or regardless of, of what, if you think, oh, I'm not gonna make it or I, I need to change my mind, just keep moving forward. Um, it's, it, this is a journey and I see it as a marathon. So don't try to sprint and say, hey, I think uh, I didn't succeed. Uh, now what do I do with my life? No, just, you know, if you fall, get up, keep going. Because, um, you know, you're going to blink and then like, uh oh, 10 years pass by, 20 years pass by. Oh, what have I done with my life? Right. So I could have easily just say, OK, well, I wanted to be a veterinarian all my life. And, you know, I didn't do that. And now it's pointless all this time wasted. No, it was not wasted. In my case, I found other avenues that incorporated what I had learned. And some of those skills are transferable in the science. So as long as you're in the science field, I think you're going to be fine. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jonathan. I, I can imagine with your, you know, growing up and all the all your experience with animals, you, you bring a very valuable viewpoint and valuable eye and observations to researchers you work with. Uh, different, I guess, yes. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna move 